Google understands clearly that the browser fingerprinting threat, which I talk about frequently on this channel, is something they want to eliminate. This fingerprinting is what third parties do to identify you even if you're not logged in. It can be used by third parties to follow your moves around the internet, primarily to support advertising. Google came up with various concepts to offer an alternative advertising tech, which they hoped would discourage browser fingerprinting. Google wants to track you and your preferences and make this data available to advertisers, but without allowing third parties to fingerprint the users. They've come up with the first idea, which was Federated Learning of Cohorts, or FLOCK, something I've talked about in a prior video. But last year, this idea was dropped and a new concept was introduced called Topics. According to Google, this new approach will be better at privacy protection than FLOCK, while still allowing targeted ads. But is it really better? In this video, I'll explain what Topics is. It is currently in beta from Google and in theory will mean some significant changes to the Chrome browser. Whether you like it or not, Google Topics is a feature that will impact your privacy, so you need to understand it. Is Google actually concerned about your privacy with these features or are we seeing smoke and mirrors? To be fair, browser fingerprinting is a real and worrisome threat. However, whatever Google does, will it really protect you or not? Stay right there to understand. To set the stage, let's not forget that Google is primarily in the ad business. This is what pays the bills for them, and so it is in their interest to track users. Why do they need to track users? It's because it allows for targeted advertising and a targeted ad campaign makes advertising have more bang for the buck. Google, of course, controls the biggest chunk of ad revenue on the internet with Google AdSense, Google Search, plus services they offer to other tech companies that rent the ad space from them. Google also collects other data from you which has nothing to do with ads. For example, all of your locations and matching identifiers are stored in the Google Sensor Vault. And this is a big resource used by government for location warrants. Google also uses various AI technologies to understand the population of users, which they aim to influence in some way. This is evidenced by their operation of Jigsaw.com and the partner Moonshot CVE. These operations appear to have a more political influencing purpose. Of course, an AI that understands human behavior can offer further insights into our thoughts and which affords them more fine control. They have the data for the AI to absorb and understand each of us individually. Right now, I will focus first only on Google's attempts at targeted advertising and why their approach claims to combat browser fingerprinting. Browser fingerprinting is a scheme where an ad tech developer looks for unique things in your browser configuration and uses that to see if you've been seen before. Using this technique, it is possible for an ad presented to you while on one website to detect that you are the same person on another website. Ad tech developers have discovered that there are enough distinguishing details about how we use browsers on our computers that we can actually be identified uniquely among millions of users. Very dangerous tech. Things like your computer configuration, your extensions, your screen size, your color capabilities, your font choice, your time zone, and so on would make you unique. This is used in combination with third-party cookies to store an identity so you're easily found at another website. And once recognized, your actions will be collected and matched to a unique identity. In other words, it initiates activity tracking. The danger here is that third parties, and I mean any third party, could track your actions on the internet. 
and your behavior can be stored and matched to a permanent identity once that is discovered, like an email address, for example. Now, Google doesn't like this. Why? Because this is an example of user tracking that exists because of the flaws in the browsers, which is accessible to any nefarious operator. But worse, Google has no control over it. So Google intends to limit the information that can be collected on Chrome. And this, they hope, will prevent the browser fingerprinting from being so precise. I have an example browser fingerprinting project on brax.me slash geo if you want to see how it works. Now, what Google wants to do is encourage advertisers to use a piece of data about each user that will be very easy to get, and it is called topics. Basically, Google will detect your interest based on the websites you visit, and then it will store this data on the Chrome browser. For example, if Google detects that you like visiting sports websites, then Google will store a topic label on your browser stating you like sports. As currently implemented, this is based on domains visited only. Each domain will have some registered relevance to a topic, so let's say you visited ESPN, Fox News, Amazon, OpenTable, and Crate and & Barrel. The Google Topics AI may then give you a topics classification of sports, politics, shopping, food, and furniture. So it may not be able to distinguish if you like basketball, football, or baseball more, or if you are a big follower of college football versus the NFL. The Google rules say you will be limited to only five topics. So once the slots of five topics are filled, then no further topics will be assigned to Chrome. Also, this topics list will only live for five weeks. After five weeks, your account will be reset and will again determine which five max topics apply to you based on the websites you visit. Now, how is this data used? Basically, each website, or in the case of an ad, the inserted website called an iframe can pull the topics information from Chrome very easily. So if an ad wholesaler sees that you have a topic called furniture, then you can see furniture ads. You can also see sports subscription ads, food ads, and whatever the ad wholesaler sees as ads compatible with your topics list. At least that's the plan. Ad companies are not particularly enthused with this system because it does not allow them the fine tuning to know exactly what you're interested in. In the past, if you went to cars.com and searched for a Toyota Camry, then expect multiple ads to pop everywhere specifically about the Toyota Camry, meaning the current browser fingerprinting method is much more precise, which the advertisers love. So it is not clear if this method proposed by Google will gain enough traction for ad companies to accept as a standard method. Unfortunately, if they don't adopt this, Google intends to do things to shut down the ability to use browser fingerprinting. So this is like a consolation prize for ad companies. That's the big picture of what's going on in this area. And friends of mine in ad tech aren't hopeful that this will succeed. The previous version of this was called Flock, Federated Learning of Cohorts. It's actually similar to topics. The main principle is the same. Ad keywords will end up on your browser that ad companies can pick up. In fact, last year, Google tested Flock on Chrome. So without your knowledge, your preferences were laid bare on Chrome for any website to pick up. This was done without any kind of permission or volunteer status. Flock, however, has the label federated learning. In reality, there is no federated learning, so the label was not accurate. Federated learning implies some sort of distributed learning by many players to learn your preferences, but nothing of that sort is happening. The way that your preferences are learned are based on the same old way as Google has always done. Your Google ID is detected by Google Analytics at the website. That puts you in a database on Google as having visited that website. Google knows everything you do. But then with topics, 
they mash the information about your web traffic, categorizes them in big groups based only on the domain, and then stores that in Chrome. Now, Google claims this works only inside the browser. The determination of topics would be based, they say, on your browsing history, so it is all local information. Which may make you think that this is the only information Google knows about you. Well, this is entirely misleading. Let me make this clear to you. Google always knows everything. Nothing in this process changes. Google Analytics still tracks your Google ID and knows what you clicked on every website. Google knows exactly which news article you clicked on Fox News. Google knows exactly which page you looked at on Yahoo. Google knows what product you search for. Google knows what question you asked on Google search. So topics and flock before that are limited tools that Google is making available to third parties while hogging the fine information to themselves. There are some hidden effects to this that I want all of you to understand. First, it makes the consumers think that Google is actually on their side with privacy because all the consumers hear is that it limits the data collection by third parties. Second, because Google is actively sharing some data, then it allows Google to fend off antitrust claims against it. Hey, we're not hogging the data, so we're not a monopoly. The actual effect of this is that ads sold by third parties will not have as much precision in the targeting. Ads will then be less successful to the third parties, which will then bring the price of ads down. In the meantime, Google still has very precise data about what you want and are thinking and could remain more targeted to those who buy ads from Google alone. Will they allow this dual level of targeting? Obviously, ad companies will find this unfair. Let me tell you something else that is interesting about the topics flock discussion. This Google approach is implemented at the browser level. The browser is intended to query Google to obtain the current topics for the users and then the browser stores that locally and makes it visible to the third parties. I don't know if you'll be able to see what topics are assigned to you by Google. There are various opt-out schemes discussed as well. But the problem is that this assumes that other browsers will follow. So Google has to convince all the big browser players outside of Chrome to participate in this. Right now, Brave and Safari, for example, are actively trying to block any kind of fingerprinting where they can. Brave removes third-party cookies automatically, and Safari users often make use of Apple's iCloud private relay, which it can use to obscure an IP address which hits some aspect of browser fingerprinting. If this topics project is not implemented at all, will Chrome be limited in removing features that allow browser fingerprinting? A quick move and it will negatively impact advertisers, which could be a costly move for Google's ad revenue. Now, I'm not here to push the desires of the third-party ad companies, but I'm here to explain the general effects of this on our overall privacy. The reality is that this is consistent with what both Apple and Google are doing. They are building walls around the OS so that they are in more control of the data. Let there be no doubt about what Google is able to know about you. I've explained this in so many videos and stupid politicians focus on insignificant threats like TikTok while ignoring the extreme data collection of Google. Apple and Google will know more about you as there are no limits to what they can track, though each company has a different focus. Since Apple doesn't sell your data for ads, it has a more of a surveillance agenda like being able to find individuals based on what is on their phone and their movements. Google's knowledge is broader. It knows more about your thoughts because it is able to see everything you do on the internet as revealed by your Google ID. This is extra dangerous in my mind because they have the AI called BARD that can naturally be fed this data. While ChatGPT GPT-4 can be used to answer general questions about the world, a BARD could theoretically be used to make plans to manipulate specific people. This topic's flock discussion just opens up the real data available to Google 
and which I want all of you to understand. With Topics Flock, third parties will not be able to spot your political associations directly unless they own the website. For example, an advertiser would not necessarily know that you watch Fox News based on the topic of politics. Fox News specifically will know, but they don't control the ad space they give to Google AdSense, and they may not know your identity. Google knows specifically, though, that you, with your specific Google ID, visits Fox News regularly, does not go to CNN, and clicks on specific news articles. And if we forget, of course, all your searches on Google Search are tied to your Google ID as well. A very complete profiling. Personally, I find this centralized knowledge of each individual to be very dangerous. And in the end, only Google will have this kind of precision of information, and only Google's AI will be able to utilize it. Google already manipulates what you see on the internet. Your YouTube recommendations, your search results, specific ads are targeted based on what Google knows about you. They have mapped out every individual by belief with an exact location. I don't know about you, but this scares me a lot. The idea of freedom is taking a new form, a much more limited form. So don't be misled by the privacy claims of Google Topics. It is all smoke and mirrors. Nothing will change. Folks, I have privacy products that protect your data so it will not be exposed to any rogue app. We have a Brax2 privacy phone running an open source Brax OS that makes your phone invisible. We also do flashing services to the Google other phone models on our store, as well as stocking pre-flashed pixels. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which has features like Tor routing, DNS obfuscation, and ad blocking. We have Braxmail, which is a metadata free way of doing email where no one knows where the message originated from. These products are on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.